Okay, welcome everyone. This is the Keeper Community Meeting on 4th of November 2020. Um, a reminder that we have a meeting minutes document where every, anyone can propose topics. I'm pasting the link in the chat again. And another reminder that in order to be able to edit this document, you just need to be uh, a member of the Keeper Dev uh, group and you will have edit access. So with that said, um, let's get it started. And by the way, oh, feel free to add your name onto the attendees list, please. So we can make a list of who is in. And let's get started. So Daniel, you have the first couple of items, all yours. Hi, everyone. At first, I just um, want to give you all a heads up that we have a new community member, uh, Federico Gimenez. Uh, I hope I pronounced this right. Sorry, I'm not really good. I guess it's Spain, right? It's Spanish. Sorry. So um, yeah, if you, if you want to, to say something, you, it's up to you now. Yes, of course. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Federico. And yeah, I've, I've just joined the, the team this, uh, this week. And, and yeah, I'll be uh, focusing on the, on the CI part of, of things and testing and all, all this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to learn from you guys as much as I can, um, trying to be um, uh, to con properly contribute to the, to the project and to the team as, as soon as possible. So yeah, please uh, bear with me during this this time. I probably do a lot of uh, silly questions and silly things and so on. But yeah, I hope to to be up to uh, up to speed uh, soon. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah great to have you. Thank you. CI and testing. I'm sure your work will be very appreciated by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's good. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so the next one is uh, from me. It's about the Kubernetes 1.19 lane. I think um, uh, we should be good regarding uh, stability of the lane. Um, maybe someone else has a different opinion than me. So then please speak up. Otherwise, I would just uh, create a PR to make it uh, mandatory then. What what data do we have on that lane? So we have like a the flake finder and things like that. Does it seem consistent with the other required lanes right now? Yeah, it looks like um, at the moment at least that it, it's not more flaky than the other lanes. I would say yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We have flaky tests on everyone on every lane still, but yeah, that, there's work on work in progress going on on that. But on the other hand, it's, um, it's not failing more often. And uh, one thing that was Kubernetes 1.19 related got fixed by Kika, I think. And I think we, have, we don't have anything else open on that. So in my opinion, it's good. Are we going to remove another lane due to um, 1.19 being required? I think we we agreed on um, uh, just supporting the last three lanes, and I think that that we should then remove Kubernetes 1.16 um, after um, this one gets uh, gets required. I'm not. I guess we, we'll do that in a separate PR then. But yeah, I, I think we should do that. Yeah, that's that sounds great. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally in favor of that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you. <clears throat> so the next item is uh, from Edward, handling errors on the first file close. Hi. So. I think uh, there was an email from Ezra. Um, he sent an email to the mailing list he, and he sent a PR about it. I linked here the PR. It's uh, something strange. I didn't saw this uh, anywhere else uh, raised. So uh, if I just wanted to bring it to your attention. So if anyone has time to think about it, it will be 
Interesting. He raised that when when you when we defer a close of a file, it maybe it's not only for files, but let's assume it's for files. Then we uh, when we do the defer, we actually ignore the if there is an error there. And then he proposed to do something about it. Um, but it seems yeah, it's, uh, uh, this one is a bit a, a bit a little bit tricky to me. Yeah, uh, I can add some information. I think I uh, added in the email. Okay. Uh, I think it's quite clear to everyone that if you have a read write file, if you write stuff to a file, um, currently most systems are caching stuff to memory. So basically, the file is can be written while you are closing it, and on some cases, even after you close it, but let's not uh, talk about that. Uh, so the file is flashed while you are closing it. So if, you, if there is an error during that close, it's similar to an error on write. It might be that you fail to write or you partially write and so on. If we defer it, uh, normally we do not test um, uh, not normally, uh, because of the defer, we do not check those errors. Uh, on Gulang and Kubernetes and so on, if there is such a, on the Gulang libraries, what they do, they do not defer the clause. They do explicit clause on every condition. And, but this is very tedious. It means that you need to make sure that on every return, you first try to close the file, which is tedious. So, um, so I, I pushed the PR and the int, to me at least, the interest is, part is what are we doing with error during, so first of all, we need, I want to get the, your reaction of whether we should at all check those errors because up to now we ignored those all over the code. Second question is what are we doing with read only files? Because you successfully read the information, you have everything you want and you fail to close it. Uh, are we failing the operation? Uh, uh, fail the sale that it's similar to fail on read? Do we panic? Uh, you know, I have my thoughts, but I want to get feedback from others as well. So feel uh, free to. Here, yeah, I have a. Yeah, so should on defer for for writes, um, would it make sense for us to call a flush and then close? Would that right. help solve this? So or this maybe is that's what you're doing. I haven't looked at the. Uh, you know, not really. So this is an option. So uh, one option is to do a flush and then you do not, you, you don't. Okay, let's put it like that. You, what you are saying is instead of deferring the clause, what we can do, we can do flash and explicit. Uh, flash after the, the right and so on. Uh, uh, that's a possibility, but then you lose the whole asynchronic issue of writing and so on. So uh, once again, uh, the problem is not the flash. The problem is what are you doing with the errors you got during the close? Uh, so on, on right, I can handle them. I, I already handled that on the PR. I think the interesting question is, what are you doing with errors on read? Once again, I, I, I want to emphasize the fact you already read the information. You have the information you wanted. You can even compare it and everything is fine, but you fail to close the file. So, so I think that uh, in my opinion, uh, the, if, if the close has an error, it means that, uh, that we have a problem. So in any case, you are you are you talked about the the problems of uh, writing or problem of reading and uh, but in any case if you get an error the the what is common to all is that you will he have a file descriptor not closed so if this is uh, something that reoccurs a lot then we will in the end we'll have a file descriptor leaking and then we'll uh, end up in a very bad shape probably and no one will know why so in my opinion, if we need to find the common, uh, common ground for all of them, and that's it. It doesn't matter if it, uh, you write and he didn't write, he did write, 
and uh, it doesn't matter if you read and it, it read it or, or uh, and then you fail to close it. In any case, it's an error. And in my opinion, my, the easiest part is the, to be, it's interesting to me if it even happens in our project. So I will just do a panic and that's it. And if, you do, if we don't do the panic, then it means we will always leak file descriptors if this is happening. I don't see any other way for us not to leak them. So what brought this up? Is this a theoretical thing that we uh, we know based on just how close works? Or is this something where we actually had detected file descriptor leaks and we, we hit some sort of limit and caused a crash? What, I guess, well, yeah, what brought this to the forefront here? No, so what, what brought it to the forefront is the fact that we run GoSec and as part of the static analysis, it actually indicated uh, one of the rules that it checks is that we do not check for closed errors. Uh, I personally, I think that at this point, because this will, what, personally, what I would have done, and this is what I've implemented is, I think we should treat errors during write because this can impact your flow. However, at this point, because of exactly what you ask, I don't think we have like severe issues on the read. I would recommend to catch those error on closing a read and just print out a log message. So in case you encounter an issue when you exhausted your file descriptor and so on, at least you can look and see whether the case is there. Because I want to remind you for the read, they are very, very, there are very kind of unique cases in which it, it doesn't make any sense to panic or to do an error. I can give you even one example. Uh, on many cases, we just open the file and try to test it, uh, check the flags, for example, if it has all direct in order to set the cache mode and so on. And then we try to close it. Now, if we fail to close it, what does it mean? That the file doesn't support it? It does support it. It doesn't mean anything for us. We don't care if we fail the closure. So I would recommend to just print a log message, but that's my opinion. Once again, we wanted to open it to, uh, and to your question. It's a concrete issue. We have it in the code. So once again, for write, I would recommend to actually catch the error and uh, return it to the caller because this is a real error. You didn't succeed to write the file. And for it, I recommend just a uh, log error, but feel free to answer in the email or here or whatever you choose. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So we'll get visibility on read uh, close errors, which I'd be really surprised if this occurs, but sure, it's, it's a great if we hit some sort of file descriptor um, limit and we'd know, at least have evidence why that's occurring. And for writes, yeah, you're right. It does um, indicate that we didn't get the um, result we wanted there. Um, hmm. Right. And I, I just want to warn you in advance because GoSec produced a lot of very, very interesting uh, issues. I'm looking on several of them. So expect more similar discussions on other topics because it seems that Go have very peculiar way on handling stuff that can cause very strange errors that are very hard to debug if we don't catch them in advance. Interesting. Yeah, okay, thanks. Well, thank you. Any additional comments or questions on this topic? So I just want to summarize that I, I want to resolve that issue and, and kind of, so if you can either comment directly on the PR or in the email list, because we kind of end up on some discussion. So we just want to, you know, get the resolution, what we kind of recommend of doing and complete it. So thank sure. you. I can follow What's up. the link to the PR, Ezra? I think that uh, um, Edward said that he linked it. Uh, yeah, it's in the meeting notes. I can put it in the chat as well. 
Um, is it second? And it, it, the overall topic is interesting because I went and do some exploration and it seems that Kubernetes itself and Golan and so on are not using go second static analysis. Uh, so it's either we will be better than everyone else or that we are doing redundant stuff. You can choose the option. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, move, moving on. Um, I just noticed in the chat uh, that uh, there were new people. Uh, I, I'm just pasting again the link to the meeting notes in case it didn't happen because you mentioned you were new. So this is the link to the meeting notes and a reminder that to get edit access, you just have to be a member of the Keep Your Dev um, group. And I'll take the opportunity, I'm sorry to put you uh, folks in the spot, but uh, we started the meeting welcoming um, a new member, Federico, but, and I see Alice, you are also new here, so I want to also do. Yeah, hi, everybody. I'm just joined first, first time in the call, so not sure what is the introduction usually, but I just wanted to say hi. Well, thanks for joining and thanks for saying hi. If you want to say a few more words about yourself. Yeah, so I joined Red Hat three months ago. So I'm part of Red Hat um, and I'm working on the virtualization team and I'm trying to get involved in, in QZAT community. So yeah, I hope I will find some to do. <laughs> Great, thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, thanks. And I also saw, and sorry again for putting you on the spot, but I see Jordi in the list as well. He joined last week, but last week we kind of canceled the meeting. So I, I know it's not your, technically not the first meeting you joined, but it's the first actual meeting you joined. So I wanted to say welcome as well, if you want to say hi as well. If not, that's fine. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if someone else uh, is new. We usually start do, doing this introductory round. If I missed someone who wants to speak, please do. Yeah, I, I can. Sorry, I was a mute. Ah. So yeah, my name is Jordi, and I joined Red Hat a month ago. I'm part of the Kubeword team as well, the CMB team. So I just joined to to learn and to get uh, as much information as I can. Nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you. Great to have you. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Cool. Um, there's no other item in the regular agenda uh, list. Um, so unless anyone has anything else, I'll move to the open floor where I added an item just to mention that a reminder that KubeCon is coming soon in a couple of weeks. And there will be, uh, Marcin sent a list, uh, a mail to the list uh, a couple of days ago uh, talking about his session on KubeBird uh, together with Huamin. Besides sessions, we will also have a, a KubeBird office hours. Um, this will be on November 19th, and there, it will be one hour where um, well, open to anyone who wants to talk around about Kubert. Um, we will make a a better announcement as as the time approaches. Um, and that's everything we have on the list. Is there any other topic anyone wants to bring or discuss? Going once, going twice. No. Well, then, thank you, everyone. Welcome, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Bye.